Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Have you ever wondered about jinns and their powers of magic? Like where does it come from? How does it occur? Black magic is something that you can understand if you understand the reality of the physical differences that humankind has from jinn. If you understand the jinn and the world of the jinn, you will understand black magic. This is because of the overlap between our world of human life and the other side that is disclosed to us, which is the world of jinn. Jinn, as we know, are created from smokeless fire. The jinn are gifted with many powers and characteristics by the will of Allah, which may be hard for some humans to believe or comprehend. They have the power to go at the speed of light. The jinn has the potential to go through physical barriers because the jinn is not material or physical. The jinn is not flesh and blood. Like us humans, the supernatural beings are energy which allow them to pass through material at the speed of light. The jinn doesn't look like anything, and this may confuse you, but this is because the jinn have the power to take on any shape or form. They can look like a human being or an animal if they wish to, and this power is only given to them by the will of Allah. Through the story of Prophet Sulaiman, peace be upon him, we see that the jinn have a very, very amazing power. In the story of Sulaiman, we learned that the jinn even has the power to transform matter into energy and to take that energy from one place to another and re-transform it back into a matter. The jinn in the story of Sulaiman promised Sulaiman that they had the power to travel from Jerusalem to Yemen to bring a huge magnificent throne within a millisecond so fast that before Sulaiman would even stand up, the throne would be brought to him by the jinn. The jinn would have taken the throne and somehow in a way that Allah knows best, take it in his hidden energy form and then bring it all the way to Jerusalem and then re-transform it back into the throne. It's extraordinary how the jinn had the capacity to do this. The jinns, as mentioned, have abilities that we do not have. They are faster than men. They are more powerful than men. The average jinn is more powerful than the average man. Do not be mistaken, however, these jinns are given these powers and strengths only by Allah's will, so they do have their limitations too. But the main reason why many of us may fear the jinn is because the jinn is invisible to our eyes. And it is natural to be scared of something so powerful to which you cannot see. However, there's nothing truly to be scared about. If we see the story of Prophet Adam, Allah commanded Shaitan to bow down to Adam, peace be upon him. Why would Allah do this? Why would Allah make Shaitan bow down to a human, despite Shaitan being physically stronger and more powerful than the human? But this is because where Adam is truly superior to the jinn, despite not having the same powers and strengths. Why or how, you may ask? This is because Adam has something far greater than physical strength and traveling at the speed of light. Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, has greater intellect compared to the jinn shaitan. This demonstrates the power of the mind and how it is more blessed than the power of the body. Allah blessed Adam with a greater intellect compared to shaitan. Not only this, but Adam was also blessed over the angels. Therefore, intellectually speaking, the jinn are nowhere near as intelligent as humankind. But this blessing bestowed upon Adam was also bestowed upon every one of us. Each one of us are blessed with great intellect. Think about all the amazing things that humans have created, such as cars, aeroplanes, smartphones, the list can go on. However, we must not forget that humans are only capable of this by the will of Allah, the most merciful and most gracious. The jinns in comparison are stubborn beings, they believe that they are above us humans, and we know this again through the story of Adam in the conversation between Allah and Shaitan. In Surah 7 verse 12, Allah asks Shaitan, What prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? To which Shaitan replied saying, I am better than he is. You created me from fire and him from clay. The jinns always wanted to be number one. The jinns always wanted to be the best which shows that the jinn suffer from an inferiority complex. 
which is a term used to describe those who feel inferior or insecure towards others. But you may wonder, how and why do the jinn feel like this despite the fact that they are stronger and faster and physically more powerful than humans? And this goes back to the point earlier on, how Allah bestowed upon us things which are better than the jinns. And this is another reason why you should not fear what you cannot see, the jinns. When in reality the jinns are more fearful and envious towards us. You may wonder as well, how did black magic even come onto earth and to knowledge of mankind? You may think it was the jinns that taught mankind magic, but in fact, it was two angels named Harut and Marut. In a nutshell, Allah sent two angels named Harut and Marut to the city of Babylon. They taught mankind that they are a test from Allah and to not come close to them. They wanted the people of Babylon to stay away from them to pass the test. But what were they gonna test them with? It was the knowledge of how to communicate with the jinn. Allah wanted to test the people to see if they would rather follow their desires and obtain help from the jinn when, as we know, communication with the jinn is completely forbidden in Islam. Harut and Marut told them that if they was to be followed by the people, they would be disbelievers. However, mankind didn't care about this. They didn't care about the consequences. Thus, black magic began and infected mankind. Magic is the intersection of the world of men with the world of jinn. The two worlds of jinns and humankind are not meant to cross each other in any circumstance. You must always remember that magic came as a test, not as a luxury. If a jinn comes into our world and causes some fitna, it is much easier to ward it off with duas to Allah and recitation of the Quran. Despite jinns not being allowed to enter our world, they also have free will and can appear to us whenever they'd like. However, we will never see them in their true form, only in shape-shifted forms. But what I'm about to tell you, you must listen. And once you listen, you will never be scared of the jinns. With jinns, they cannot harm us if we pray our five daily prayers and recite many duas. A believer's best shield is his faith in Allah. A person who personally interacts with the jinn and calls upon them is not only a disbeliever but has sold his soul to the devil. In order for the jinn to perform a request, the jinn will want something from you, just like a transaction. But what is the price to pay for the jinn's help you may ask? The answer is simple yet so heavy, and that is superiority. The jinn wants to feel worshipped and above you. And how do they want you to do it? They want you to lower yourself in front of the demon and become the slave of the jinn. One big misconception is that the sorcerer controls the jinn. However, nothing could be further from the truth. It is the jinn that controls the sorcerer. The magician is a filthy creature of a human that has sold itself and its dignity and its faith in order to do forbidden deeds for the jinns. The jinn want to see the magician humiliate themselves and become the worshipper of the jinn. The only man that was able to control the jinn at his command by the will of Allah was Prophet Sulaiman, peace be upon him. And when people want to try and ask favors for the jinn, they come to the magician thinking they are in control when in fact the magician is like a puppet and the jinn is the puppet master. The magician humiliates themselves and does horrific deeds behind closed doors in order to request the jinn to perform the tasks and most of these magicians would do all of this just for money. You pay them and they will request the jinn to perform it for you at the price of their own dignity. The jinns will only control you if you call upon them which is why Allah forbids anyone to go near the jinns and their magic. This is the reality of life, and you must know black magic and the supernatural world of jinns is indeed real. Once you understand the reality of this world, you should not be scared of it in the slightest. You must understand that the jinn is absolutely terrified of Allah and the name of Allah. If one day in your life you feel the presence of a jinn, or perhaps see something supernatural, it will be terrified of your bravery due to your faith in Allah. The fact that you have no fear, you stare at it straight, 
no fear in your body or eyes, and call upon Allah, they stand no chance, and you will see how quickly they disappear. If you do the opposite of this, and show you are fearful to even utter Allah's name, the jinn will feel empowered and strong by your fear. This is what they thrive off. They want to feel stronger and superior to you, and this is the only way they can feel like that. So you must learn to train your psychology to understand how strong the connection between you and Allah can be, and why you must strive for this strong connection to protect yourself completely. I hope after this video, you have understood more about jinns and black magic, and I pray to Allah we all gain the strength and faith to never fall into fear towards the jinns, and may Allah protect us from any whispers from shaitan, which may motivate us into following our desires of wanting supernatural help from the jinns. Take care, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.